good morning. As I sit here this morning, I'm thinking about a lot of current events going on, and uh, we'll deal with a little bit of that in uh, the scriptures here in a minute. But um, I wanted to first, I've got this um, the story um, of Charles Alexander. There's a the book called A Romance of Soul Winning and Song. And if you've never seen that, read it, it is such an encouraging book. What a great book. Every Every preacher should have it, and every young man training for ministry, especially in the area of music, should have it. Um, this is uh, twi called Twice Around the World with Alexander. Um, Brother Treber in North Valley Baptist published this, and I'm not sure if it's the, um, the exact same. I think it's a different because I was looking for some pictures, and it's a little different, um, but it's still the stories. But what I, I pulled it for, I've not read this one, but I've read the other one, um, and I've, got, I've gone through it multiple times. And in fact, when the Sword of the Lord was selling them out or whatever it was, I got it's a big book, twice as big as this, um, in size, uh, height, and width. And, and uh, I got them for $2 a piece. I just bought a case of them and gave them away to preachers and young men in Bible college. But um, Charles Alexander was just, a, he just had a passion for God, passion for music. His upbringing, he was around gospel singing and, and preaching all the time. But um, you'll not be able to see this very well. But uh, here is a, a picture of the choir at one of his meetings in, in Australia. And it says that there were, um, at Melbourne, Australia, 1,250 voices in the choir. And he'd have these, uh, these citywide meetings with, um, like uh, Harry Ironside and others. And he would come to do the singing. He's a great soul winner. Had a passion for soul winning, and um, but he was always, he was always seriously wanting to reach the hearts of of people for Christ, leading them to Christ. But he used music. And again, this is a this is a little more blurry picture. But this is a, a twelve thousand children at the Royal Albert Hall, and um, can you imagine twelve thousand children in one place? And what a what a place that would be. And then I marked another one here. Uh, this is the Sunbeam Choir of Ottawa, Canada. And you can look at the size of this of this kids' choir, young people's choir. And um, the the point of this, uh, the reason I bring this, is because I hear people talk about well, you know, they, these these Canadians or these Indians or these uh, Australians. And I think, you know what? I don't buy any of that. It, there's the same God. Now, if God is done, if God has written off the world and we're turning a corner toward the trumpet for the rapture and, and uh, the one world government, one world medical system, one world military and finance and all that, okay, I'll take that. Um, I've heard people say, when that last soul is saved, then the trumpet sounds. And I don't know, I guess there will be a last one, but I don't know all the details of all that. But I do know that the God of Charles Alexander and the God of Billy Sunday and uh, the God of, of the people of the past is the same God we serve today. And I feel the church has become very corrupt, and it has in, in times past as well. And that's where revivals came in, when the church got more and more corrupt, and then God, brought, God raised up someone, like in the book of Judges, God raised up someone who was that spark, who was that stirring, passionate person that rallied the people, and church members were getting saved, and, and the lives were being changed. Well, it's all centered on, on God. And that's why we need prayer. And you hear me talk about it. Pray for your church, your state, your city, your country. Pray for God's mercy on us. We're in a mess in America. And our, our legal system has been corrupted and, and uh, twisted. And our, our um, law enforcement, I, I, I am, I'm going to stay for the law enforcement, even though there's some certainly some very corrupt people in law enforcement up the ladder. But I'm going to keep... I'm going to keep backing the guys that I see on the freeway or on the streets and lanes, but but um, some corruption in there is not going to get me to throw the whole institution out. I still love America. Well, we've got Washington, D.C. is about as rotten as it's ever been, I would guess. But um, 
we need to pray. And, and God, the God that would get a 1,200 voice choir in Melbourne, Australia, he's the same God that we have today. And um, I just think we need some people praying and fasting, and we need mercy. Just to, Is God willing to do these things? That's the bottom line. Would God do it? Could God do it? Of course, he could. Would God do it? That's up to him. But do we care? Are there Christians even praying? Are we content with our prosperity? We've got our homes, cars. When, when the majority of our prayer life is based around the health of this body that's going to feed worms, maybe we need to realign our priorities. And what is really important is the souls of men and the preaching of this book. Those are the two eternal things. This book's going to be in heaven when we get there. It's already forever settled in heaven. The Word of God and the souls being saved by putting their faith in the Son of God, that is what's eternal. And uh, I don't want to hurt. I don't want to be sick, obviously. But, but my bodily health is low on the priority list compared to our Sunday school and our bus ministry and jails and rest home ministries. Those are the big things. But anyway, today uh, I want to take just a moment and and uh, bring you to a passage. Um, my Growing up in my home, you didn't lie. Now, I'm not saying we didn't, but boy, if you got caught, it was capital punishment and you were in big trouble. Lying, um, you're going to sin. You're going to do wrong, but you better be honest about it. And just like lying was that top thing. Uh, You just don't lie. Man's word ought to be his bond, and what you say ought to be trustworthy by everybody. And we were, I wasn't raised in church every Sunday, but we had ethics, and we had, when I hear people in political office and people in positions of authority just blatantly lie, I just think, I'm done with you. I, I can't even stand to hear your voice. And we are we're in this culture. See, back in the COVID, when COVID was first getting rampant and the whole world uh, hiding behind masks and, and quarantines and all this, I heard so many things that I knew were lies. They were just, they, they were lying. And of course, it came out later that they were lying. But once you've proven to me that you have an agenda bigger than honesty, I don't trust you. I will never trust you again. And when I hear uh, newscasters or, or people in the science world or whatever, when you're having to disbar people or when you're having to, to uh, take people's jobs away because they differed with you on an opinion, I think you've got something to hide. Uh, I don't have to scream and holler and kick you if you differ with me. You know, you got an opinion, I got an opinion. We'll find out one day who's right. But if I have to beat you up or shoot you or jail you, uh, like these January 6 people for fear, to, to try and put fear in people who would differ from me. I've, I've admitted that I'm corrupt and deceitful and I cannot be trusted. But um, in these, these recent years, we've seen, uh, I heard somebody call them the alphabet organization, organizations, DOJ and FBI and CIA, whatever. Um, I don't know where that phrase came from, but, but somebody used that phrase and I thought, well, that's, that's a good cutting kind of a term. But I, I feel they've they've compromised their integrity. I feel like the upper level people in our country, I don't trust them anymore. They they the honor. Remember, some of you may not remember, but the the story of the Untouchables. Chicago was under such bribery and and uh, graft, and it was a mess. And they brought in these guys who could not be bought, and they called them the Untouchables. Elliot Ness and anything. Those are the heroes that a boy ought to have. Nobody is going to buy me off. I will stand for right, and I'll die before I'll lie. And I, you know that that kind of thing. But we're a long ways from it now. Matthew chapter twenty-eight tells a story of the tomb where Jesus was laid. Now you know the story. He's crucified. Three days later, he raises from the dead. An angel comes along, rolls the stone away, not so Jesus can get out, but so people can see that Jesus is gone. And I want to read you a verse here, Matthew 28. And they come to the city, to the, to the leaders. And, um, and when they had assembled with the elders and taken counsel, they gave large money to the soldiers, saying, Say ye, his disciples came by night and stole him away while we slept. Um, and verse 15, so they took the money and did as they were taught. And this saying is commonly reported among the Jews to this day. They said, we'll give you money if you'll lie. These guys, their word meant nothing. From this day on, their word meant nothing. Now, 
I'm just being candid. There are some reasons people lie. Um, people lie for money. Uh, they lie because they can get rich or they lie because they won't lose money on this product or whatever it might be. Corporate um, shenanigans go on because they realize if, if, if this gets out that we knew about this, we'll be sued, we'll lose everything. And so people lie f for money or to keep from losing money. And then other times people lie out of fear. Now, those guys in Matthew 20, they could have lied for fear of their jobs, uh, fear of their lives. And I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying people lie as children. You know, there are people who lie. Uh, one little guy, many, many, 30 years ago, he had uh, uh, he'd gotten uh, demerits or some little thing. And I guess his dad was pretty strict with him. And, and so when a kid did something, they get a demerit or two for, you know, whatever, not getting homework done or not, I, whatever things they can get demerits for. Um, and so then the note goes home to their parents. So the parents know they got some demerits. And it's not a big deal. If you get, I don't know, 50 or 100 or whatever, you get suspended or kicked out. I don't know what. But um, you can accumulate demerits here and there. But anyway, um, this kid, I think he was a second grader. He got some demerits. Well, he didn't want his dad to see it. So he forged his dad's signature. And then you have to bring it back, seeing the dad knew. And now we got this second grader on whatever he got the demerits for and forgery. And the poor kid, man, I could have cried for him. Well, he he lied I'm sure out of fear, he didn't want whatever was waiting for him when he faced his father. And I have no idea. And, and the, the kid grew up to be a great young man. And, and um, anyway, fear will move us. And uh, you think about An Ananias and Sapphira. Remember the story in Acts chapter 5? They had sold some land. They took part of the money and they brought it to the apostles. And they gave the impression this was all the money they, they got. And he says, why have you lied to the Holy Ghost? It was yours. You could have kept all the money. You didn't have to do this. Why did you lie to God? And, uh, and Ananias dropped dead. A little while later, his wife shows up. Did you really do this? Yes, she, yes, I did. And she dropped dead. And what a tragedy. These people died. Why did they lie? They lied. I don't think they lied for money because they had money. They lied because they wanted to look good. And there are people who will lie in hopes of getting the accolades of humanity, that people think I'm somebody. And what a shame, what a tragedy that people would, would lie just to look good or that they would lie to get some money. And I think in some of these cases, people would lie to, to keep their job. Over in 1 Kings um, chapter 21, uh, I mentioned the other day, um, the story of Ahab and Jezebel and Naboth. And uh, Naboth wouldn't sell his vineyard to Ahab, and Ahab pouted. His wife said, I'll get you that vineyard. So she sends a note over to some people she knows in Naboth's village and says, set up a couple of liars in court. Boy, have we not seen that. They're all over the place. Uh, you can probably go to a website. I'm looking for someone that will lie under oath. Um, and so they set these guys up, and they said Naboth uh, blasphemed God and the king, and they took him out and stoned him, and Naboth died. And, you know, why did those guys lie? Well, maybe out of fear of the of the wicked Queen Jezebel. Maybe out of, they lied for the money. Uh, we don't know for sure why they lied. But it is not uncommon for people to lie out of fear. It's not uncommon for people to lie for money. Um, it's not uncommon for people to lie so they look good. I don't want this to get out because I will look bad. Well, remember when, uh, when Jacob... His mom said, put these goat skins on here and get this, bring this food and tell your dad you're Esau. He said, what if he, he feels me and finds out and I'll, I'll appear to be a deceiver? No, Jacob, you are a deceiver. You're just being found out. And all oh, that we would live where we wouldn't be afraid of being found out. Um, but but let's, let's just take a minute and go back on this thing. Um, the, you might say, if, if I'm going to stop listening to news outlets that lie. I'm not going to, I'm done. And that's exactly right. I'm done. I'm done with all these. There's a few online sites where I can read headlines of, of an online paper uh, that I feel I've like I've not found them twisting statistics and lying about things with an agenda. But while we ought to count lying and deceit as the corrupt thing it is, Let's realize there are probably people who got into Washington, D.C., conservative and became liberal. And who knows? Maybe their marriage 
uh, their wives were threatened, their husbands, maybe their children were threatened. Maybe some young man's in the military, he's got this great career in front of him, and they say, you better change on this, you keep the stand, we will go after your child, and we'll find a way to destroy your child. And We don't know what goes on. You've seen it if you followed politics at all. Here's a right wing, straight as an arrow, Bible-believing, gets to Congress or gets up there in D.C. somewhere, and all of a sudden they're bending and twisting and you say, how'd it happen? I don't know. There's more to this thing. So sometimes when somebody lies, have a little mercy. You don't know what's behind it. And I'm not saying they should lie. I'm just saying there are times, well, you don't know the pressure someone's under. Um, somebody I would have trusted just unbelievably. I would have trusted with anything. And uh, and, and and I saw a situation where, and not, not anybody from our church, um, uh, that nobody that attends here, but but the situation where this guy lied under oath, and I, I I was so shocked because it's a guy I would trust, it's a guy I would believe in, and and again we're not we're separated by thousands of miles and all. It's not like we we ever talk or anything, but I think I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed for him. I'm embarrassed for him. That he has to shave every morning and look at that face. Say you're a liar. You're a corrupt liar. You lied under oath. And, you know, that means maybe he's going to go to Washington and be the vice president or something. Who knows? But um, you don't know what's behind it. So on, on one side this morning, would you do this? Let's be honest. And let's, let's tell our children, your name and reputation matters so much. You cannot sell your name. On the other side, when someone else does sell out the truth, maybe step back and say, I don't know the whole story. And I don't think you should lie for anything, but we don't know the whole story. And it just might be that there's something going on and we don't know how we would act under those conditions. But here in the Bible, these guys at the tomb of Jesus, they just said, you're giving me that much money? I will tell you that uh, the stork came and carried him away. They just, look, let's be honest. Let's be people. Let's don't, see, uh, uh, and sometimes people say, well, it's not quite a lie. If you gave the impression of something that wasn't true, you lied. And I don't want to give a fault. I don't want to lead people to think something. Well, I didn't say it that way. They assumed it. Well, communicate clear. Let's don't be liars. Let's be honest. And uh, let's know we're going to face the judge one day. And he is the true one and the just one. And I hope we'll be honest for our country's sake. God needs to see a bunch of Christians who look up to heaven and say, I'm doing right because of you, God. And I want, your, I want you to be pleased with me. And I'll be honest. And oh, I hope we'll labor. Uh, you know, when you go to the commandments, the 10 commandments up on Mount Sinai that Moses got, you know, when God chose those 10 things, of course, the first few were toward God, no idols and, and uh, don't take any other gods and don't, take the name of the Lord in vain. But when you get down to the ones that are vertical, those commandments, do you know right in that group of commandments, he said, no, do not bear false witness. Do not bear false witness. Hundreds and hundreds of commands later were given. But in the first 10, don't you be a liar. And let's try to please him. But when somebody else gives, let's give him a little grace.